The t-test for beta 0 follows the same form as we've seen before. So the sample estimate, b sub 0, minus the population parameter if the null hypothesis is true, divided by the estimated standard error. So let's start with beta 0. Beta 0 here, if the null hypothesis is true, should be equal to 0. So in our graphic, that's a situation where, when you have 0 of study hours, you actually have 0 on the final percentage. Now it doesn't matter whether there's a slope in the population, so I could equally draw this where we actually have some true slope, but still, when we have 0 of studying, the final percentage is actually 0. So in our formula, the numerator actually reduces down to simply being our sample estimate, b sub 0, divided by the estimated standard error. Like I did for the t-test for beta 1, I want to show you the estimated standard error in this formula. Now don't worry too much about each component, we'll actually look through it more completely in just a second, but notice that it has more pieces to it. And in fact, this reveals something about the estimate of beta 0, that more things can go wrong when we're estimating beta 0. So in fact, there tends to be more error in estimating that parameter. Let's take a look at why this is. Here is our regression relationship we fit before. And I'm actually going to remove the formula, I'm even going to remove the points, and I'm leaving just one point, the mean of x and the mean of y. Now I didn't mention it before, but all regression lines will go through the mean of x and the mean of y. This is the bivariate mean. This is the most stable point we can estimate in the population. If you think about it, if you were to make one prediction for where x scores are, well it would be the mean of x. And if you were to make one prediction for where y scores are, it would be the mean of y. So it behooves our line in terms of minimizing the sum of squared residuals to go through the mean of x and mean of y. So let's keep that there. I'm going to bring back our estimated standard error for the intercept. Remember, this is the error associated with estimating where this line will hit the y-axis. That is, where this line is when x is 0. So I'll start by highlighting some pieces we've seen before. So the sums of squares for x, remember, is a function of the number of observations and the spacing of observations. We saw that in the standard error of b1, and that reflected the fact that we can more stably estimate the slope if we have our observations in x space spread out. Now you'll also notice the 1 divided by n. Now that's representing the fact that error variance in estimating the mean of y decreases as a function of sample size. Remember, that's from the standard error of the mean. So sigma squared over n was the variance of our sample mean. So as we increase the number of people, we can better estimate where the mean of y is. Now let's see why this matters in this case. Remember, our line will always go through x bar, y bar. So to the degree that we can estimate where y bar is, we will better estimate where the intercept is. And let's see this. If I move around the line, if there's tremendous error in estimating the mean of y, well the intercept gets moved around quite a bit, just as much as the mean of y experiences error. Now what about the sums of squares for x there? Now notice this is in the denominator, so to the degree that the sums of squares for x is larger, then the error of this estimate of beta 0 will go down. Now this is reflecting the fact that if we misestimate the slope, we will also misestimate the intercept. So, to the degree that I can make my estimate of the slope more stable, I'll also make my estimate of the intercept more stable. Because notice, if I misestimate the slope, where this line hits the y-axis, that is, where this line is when x is 0, will change. So, to the degree that I can estimate the slope well, that is also adding to the degree I can estimate the intercept well. Now let me move that box down, and you may have noticed that in the numerator, right above the sums of squares for x, is x bar squared. Now of course, x bar squared is just x bar squared, but really we can think about this as a function of how far 0 is from the mean of x. That is literally what it means. Now why should this have an effect? Notice that it's above the sums of squares for x, so in essence, it's going to scale how much of an influence our estimation of the slope really exerts on the error experienced by the intercept. So here's an easy way to see this. If I move the mean of x to be closer to 0, let's put it down there at 1, notice that misestimating the line, that is misestimating the slope, has very little influence on the estimate of the intercept. So to the degree that we have a mean of x, 
that is close to zero will do better at estimating the intercept. In fact, if the mean of x is actually zero, notice that that whole term drops out. That is, if the mean of x is zero, the sums of squares for x in the denominator has no effect. So misestimating the slope of the line has no effect on the intercept if you're actually at the mean of x. All right, let's look at the final component, the mean square for error, because this is the scaling factor for the rest of these components. So if the mean square error is small, all of these components will have relatively small influences in moving around the line and actually influencing the estimate of the intercept. But if the mean square error is large, then all of these factors contribute to a large misestimation in general of the intercept in the model. So notice that our t-test for beta zero is sensitive to a large number of things, but this should give you some insight into what you should do if it's really critically important that you estimate well the intercept. Well, first off, you should certainly have a large sample size. That's always a good thing to do. But specifically, you should have the mean of x be as close to zero as possible. And in fact, if what you're most interested in estimating is where your line hits the y-axis, that is, how much of y you have when you have zero of x, well, your mean of x should be zero then. You should measure lots of people when they have none of x.